You've eaten Gotham's wealth, its spirit, but your feast is nearly over. This is not my home. It's an operating table. And I'm the surgeon. Why aren't you laughing? From this moment on, none of you are safe. Welcome to the Batman Book Club, a podcast exploring the Dark Knight Library. I am your host, Ryan Lauer. The Batman Book Club is a proud member of the Batman Podcast Network, hosted by Batman on Film. Just go to batmanonfilm.com, click on Podcasts, and you'll find the Batman Podcast Network that has a whole list of other Bat-related shows that also like to frolic into other nerdy subjects that we all love to frolic about. Right, Pete? Nobody Batman frolics. We're grown men. We don't frolic. <laughs> Batman Book Club is also on Patreon. If you like what's going on with the show and you want to help support the show, go to patreon.com slash the Batman BC. Thank you for listening now to episode number 135, Batman in December, the final episode of this podcast in the year 2022. Um, that means that Pete and I here, my guest, um, you know him. He's Gotham's own Santa Claus, uh, Peter Arvera from Straight Out of Gotham Podcast. Hello, Pete. You frolicker. Hello. Nobody frolics, right? They nobody jog, frolics. maybe. You say they nobody frolics. run. Nobody we frolics frolic. while listening to your podcast. Poly- nobody's there's frolicking. A, there's a gif of Kermit that's always used with his arms flailing. Oh, oh, oh. That's frolic. That, He's a that's, frolicker. That's not frolicking. That's like panicking. That's like a panicking Kermit gif. That's a froggy frolic. But Pete, uh, thanks for coming. I feel like coming. Candyland is where you would frolic. Well, yeah, because we're all jacked up on sugar. Yeah, that's where you would like to be. That's what I'm talking about. Frolicking. But nobody's that's frolicking. Me. You're the only one who's frolicking. That's me when I get in a new two liter of Mountain Dew. I'm frolicking like I'm in Candyland. <laughs> one soda, two liters. Do the math. Oh, <laughs> uh, this is so. Pete, we're we're going to be uh, creeping up on doing this now. The wrap ups for uh, nearing two years. That's pretty. I think we should be proud of that. That's a lot of work. We put in the work. Oh well, you know. I only appreciate people who do. That's um, right. Yeah. Wow. Two years of this monthly order of punishment. <laughs> Every Batman. What started was... as what started as joy turned into punishment. <laughs> yeah. Uh, which sometimes could be a chore to try to fit in all these titles. You know, when we I were really... when we were yeah, knocking really... on thirty books, that was starting to get a little like, okay, I, I really do have whole... stuff I have to get outside of life. <laughs> I never understood the whole DC publishes too much Batman until I put on the task of reading every Batman book they published. Every month. And then it's like, yeah, okay, I was like, oh, well, maybe I, there's a point there. A point you there. guys are doing a, a little bit, a little bit, but it's okay. It's still fun. You can cut out certain... incorporated anytime you want. No one will miss it. Yeah. What's that? So maybe Clow. Because <laughs> it's, uh, it's the one Batman title we never talk about. We never <laughs> talk about. Exactly. <laughs> Um, but I mean, the wrap ups at least give us a, a reason to where you're basically the co-host. If there's a co-host of this show, it's Peter Arvera, and we uh, we the associate producer, and we stress out that last week of the month to be like, how can we both have a schedule that uh, works for an hour where we can talk this? <laughs> it doesn't work. It we doesn't just work. make it work. We made it work. We made the universe stop, but. Yeah, final one, final episode of this year. Don't let me forget, Pete, by the end. Uh, and you can think about it now. Don't say it now. But by the end of the episode, I want to know what your favorite uh, Batman book was of 2022. Um, like are we talking giving... singular issue or overarching story for a title? This is like the question I actually put out on the Twitter account, too. It can count as like a book, like a, a, an actual Batman book, because Matthew Manning's Batman, The Ultimate Guide came out this year. Um, mm-hmm. You can talk about uh, an arc, an issue, um a run, um, a mini series. So, I mean, you know, just as examples, Batman Killing Time was a mini series, six issue. The Imposter was three issues. Uh, there's we can really you know, break down this into subcategories. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just whatever pops pops up in your head. So, keep that on your brain as we work our way through the month of December of the Batman books in December. Kicking off as we usually do every single month, Pete. Batman issue 130, written by Chip Zdarsky, with art by Jorge Jimenez. This wraps up the fail-safe arc. Um, 
Yeah, I already know your. I already yes. know you. I already know your feelings on this, but I want to get mine out first. I the more I say, so I'm going to trash it first. The more, the more I sit and think about like the issue and the story, I can feel the ridiculousness of it, and it does not have stuff that I appreciate the batman sensibilities and batman falling from space but i will say what i've been saying at least the past couple issues and as far as the batman title itself goes is that i'm at least entertained they are it's kind of ridiculous and it's not exactly my favorite but i am at least curious to keep reading and see where where it goes and that's kind of how i felt with this issue and i think the seven page breakdown of batman falling from space down to earth at least, and you know, the way that it was broken down of like a panel by panel, at least had me intrigued. Um, if I sit and think about it way too much, then I'll definitely be like, yeah, I don't I don't think I like this. But as it's still like whatever uh, the there's a you know fight, he reunites with Robin and Batman and Robin, which kind of brings a full circle from the first issue of this arc, which I love that issue 125 of Batman and Robin together. And then they fighting fail safe from the get go. I've told you that's not my my thing either fighting a robot is not and the way that the book ends we'll see how it follows up next month because the direction i feel like it made it it's kind of confusing and the direction i feel like it's going isn't exciting to me at all but so batman 130 middle of the road i was entertained um don't feel the need to revisit i don't think this arc or this issue Go ahead, Pete. Um, there are moments that entertain me, but I think mm-hmm. there are way too many just absurd, ridiculous moments around those moments that I dislike to a great extent. And that is what holds the book back. There's more negative sure. than good, in my opinion. But I do think that Zdarsky writes Batman and Robin flawlessly. Yeah, That is the highlight of the book. I think any Bat fan would admit that that is the highlight of the book, seeing Batman and Robin, you know, they've never fought Batman and Robin. You know, like that dialogue yeah. is really great. But the story just falls flat, like this version of, uh, in my opinion, it's a version of a mozo, a mezo, whatever you want to call it, uh, you know, that Batman created. And, like you know, and there were other yeah. parts that entertained me. Uh, like the Justice League battle, the j- battle with the Robins, all that stuff. That what stuff was fun, entertaining. It's just, yeah, what they're fighting is just like, oh god! Like I would much rather watch the the Robins fight Deathstroke or the Justice League fight Uxus, a person. Well, not yeah. even necessarily a person, but I mean, anything, not, a, a living a living thing. It's hard for me to say that a robot is a living thing. It's I just a machine. I hate- eh. I hate stories where it's like, oh my god, the hero created this, and the, you could throw like Age of Ultron in there too, you know, like, oh, the hero created this, this is his fault, blah blah blah, you know, like those stories are just like, oh god, I don't like them. I mean, I like it for Age of Ultron because I hate Iron Man, so like anytime he does something wrong, it's it's a thing to be celebrated because he's a just a narcissist bum, but like you know when Batman's doing it, it it's a whole other story. <laughs> yeah. So like, yeah. Uh, we'll we'll see where the Batman title goes. I'm excited for the next chapter. Let's get on to it. I'll start buying Batman again until Zdarsky. Like, not until if Zdarsky puts me off, I'll, I'll put it on hiatus. Like I have like recently. I'm like, oh, God, yeah. like five dollars a book, four dollars a book. Like you know, unless you're writing something, I'm enjoying. I'm not buying it. Yeah, I hear you. Uh, another book that came out that first on um, December sixth, that first Tuesday, uh, uh, Batman and the Joker, the Deadly Duo. Pete, how are you feeling with the second chapter of this book from Mark Silvestri? This book is unlike anything we've ever seen before, in my opinion. Like having you Batman guys can't see it. Joke, Pete's frolicking right now about this. I no one's frolicking. I'm enjoying a nice espresso. Um, <laughs> there's no frolicking involved. I don't know what he's. I think he will. Um, seeing Batman and the Joker work together in this way is fascinating to me. Mm-hmm. almost like you know the end of the rope type deal um but also like you know we're getting closer to finding out the real deal with these like i don't know joke these i don't know these joker dog i don't know what to call them these like um 
what are they? The Joker clone? Like we, we're we're just getting that much closer uh, to 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 that part as well. And like it's just I, I'm so hooked on this story. They were just Joker zombies to me, is what I just thought of in my head. Like oh, Joker zombies. Oh, like oh. like No Max from like Blade Two. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Um, the only thing I honestly don't like is the design of the Batmobile. That's the only thing I don't like in the story at all. And that's so, you know, and you throw in the Harley Quinn wrench in there. That's interesting. Um, Batman and Bullock get some good, like it's, it's, it's a very well-written book. It's also a very interestingly drawn book. The Batmobile maybe a bit too much, but this is like, this is chef's kiss. Yeah. I, I'm loving it. I uh, love the last issue. love this issue. The opening also with the, you know, Gordon. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, this is, you can almost say elements of, this is just, it's dark. And I do like, I don't know, a dark Batman story. And it's, it's Sylvester's art is like Jim Lee on steroids, I think. It's almost even more penciled than Jim Lee. Uh, I do I feel like it's more I do really fine. like it. I feel like he uses a finer pencil. Sure. Yeah. 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 Uh, pretty messed up when you're, you know, the opening pages of the guy who has the doctor's family. Mm-hmm. tied up and he's like okay now so so i just feel like that guy who has the the doctor's family tied up has something on him and he's forced to make the doctor it's very saw do something to yes exactly to commissioner gordon which it's implied we don't fully know i bet you he cuts off his pinky toe oh goodness um <laughs> but then <laughs> we'll it's stuck there but then you know it, it, there's another a, a great fight scene and then yeah like you said it thrown in harley quinn we get we check in on harley quinn and where she's at and oh then you know in the bat cave with alfred and and dick and stuff and i don't i do like the batmobile uh it's not my my favorite uh i do like it but i don't know i don't i don't have a you know, i don't have a flaw i don't have anything to, to pick up hard or really negative to say and i know it's just only two issues out of seven but it's everything's working for me here. I, I really dig this. I think it's great. Um, Black label series, mini series are just. We can talk about this at the end too. That mini series, I think, are just far and away doing a, a more consistent job Easily. than the legacy titles, which is really surprising and kind of a bummer. Uh, I'd love it for all of these Batman books that we read for all of them to be awesome. Um, I know that's asking a lot, but that's like seventy books a month. Right? Yeah, I know. Um, then also yeah. moving right along, Batman Night Watch number four continues this fun series. Uh, there's I, a, if the Grev boys don't get this, you know, I next know. year in their stocking, then uh, Garrett's family is a that big. counts Ryan Powers too into that mix of a Grev boy. <laughs> yes, um, yes, he's one of the Grev boys, but the oldest. I mean, it's really fun, really fun of having you know Killer Moth. With Batgirl, because we know that there's there's history there. Uh, it, that's the first half of the story, and then to find out what's what's going on because of you know Nightwatch, and then the, the second story brings in Scarecrow, which you always yeah. get me with Scarecrow. I mean, it's just fun. I think there's one issue left of this, and then I'll be picking up the trade. They're going to release it in a trade. They have to. Um, this will be one that I that I pick up because I just think it's a lot of fun. It's a, I do, I don't, I know I just said that I like my, did I convince you to pick this up? Batman's, Cause I was yes, like, did. Oh, this kid Batman book. Yeah. Okay. I was like, yep. wow, I would like this. I haven't read the first issue. I haven't read issue number one. So that'll be something to look forward to when the collection comes out, but it is a nice mix up of flavor. As much as I like Batman, you know, dark stories, this is very like you and I have, I think have said before, almost a little animated series ish or, this is why I call like Batman starting or... point Batman, you know. Yeah, like you and there's Mr. nothing wrong with that. There's nothing you get that's two stories like, in one. This is childish. This is kind of dark. no, and it involves no, it's just every fun. member of the Bat family from Batman mm-hmm. to Huntress. Like everyone's included, so you get a really good taste of what's out there in Gotham. And there's a great uh, array of villains. There's a lot of Killer Croc in here. We've seen everyone yeah. from. Have we? Has the only villain we haven't really seen are like Roz and the Joker. Like honestly, see, I don't know because I didn't see the first or read the first issue. So, so I don't know who's in that first issue. We get a really good array of villains. Um, the stories aren't that crazy. They're more, let's say, you know, punch them up action stories and kind of like, you know, but th- there's like some little detective elements. It's not yeah. boring enough to like, you know, 
or let's say not detailed enough to bore a young reader, but it's in there. Like there's a lot of good Batman stuff in here. Yeah, that's a good point. You can't like from the second page be like, oh, I don't know where this is going. No, it keeps you invested throughout its, you know, each mini story. So I don't I don't know. Maybe this becomes maybe Nightwatch becomes like a Legends of the Dark Knight. And it will pop out I, another miniseries again, or I feel like I, they can. They could. Um, you don't think so? I, you don't I want think it. Legends of a Dark Knight is on a different level, just of storytelling. Oh, I just, I mean, I mean, not to substitute, but as far as like, oh, another Night Watch miniseries is coming, and then another Night Watch okay, miniseries, yeah. and like groups of Every five so or often. something, not okay. a continuation of what that original Legends of the Dark Knight title was, or anything like that. Which I'm waiting for the next run. Because I could see, like, if I had kids, I would pick this up in my shop for my kids. Oh yeah, definitely. But yep. also, like, I wouldn't want this to be ongoing. I like your mini series idea because then it's like, oh man, I gotta buy. Like, <laughs> I buy so many books for myself. Yeah, but then I gotta buy books for my kid. You know, like the mini series idea. <laughs> there's almost anxiety if there's an if there's an ongoing series announced anywhere anymore and i'm not just saying with batman it's like with anything it's like the first thing hey this like they announced you know a batman brave and the bold book is coming and, and so everywhere i'm looking at i'm like is this like is this capped or is this ongoing because if it's capped great if it's ongoing oh, yeah. <laughs> we don't know how long that's gone <laughs> yeah you know and sometimes they don't tell you when these things are going to end like i think robin they're the i think they're robin waiting to run. see yeah they're waiting like we'll see how it does and that'll determine its length so for main Batman books, that first Tuesday, there you go. That wraps it up. The next Tuesday, December 13th, let's start with one that I convinced you to read. The Batman and Scooby-Doo Mysteries, number three. It was cute. It was nice. I get it. I'm so, I, you you know me, right? Like, I'm just, I don't need to see the court. You don't need this stuff. No, it's not even that. It's just Court of Owls. Like, okay, Court of yeah. Owls. They're back. They're in like four stories this month, by the way, too. So I really fed up with the Court of Owls. So I, this, and they're another let's one. talk I about actually them enjoyed for it. a second. Because I do, less is more. Yeah. And I get that the Court of Owls have become uh, a staple. Because they it really out, have. They really it came have. out the gate and it just clicked. I don't need so much stuff to in oh you know it did involve the court of owls sort of deal like I don't know I don't need it all the, I don't need it all the time. But like, that okay, being said, grandma, we get it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like the, like, the grandma, like oh back when we ran Gotham, no one had to carry ice upstairs. Like okay, yeah. thanks. <laughs> but I'm with you. I thought I thought this one was actually like a lot of fun, and that what opening it- page was like it was a freaking like this almost like the Scooby Doo mansion yeah in the opening credits of that show. It was cute. I enjoyed it. The purple coloring on stuff, it's very Scooby Doo. And then yeah, it's just it is a lot of fun. Um typical shenanigans from Scooby and Shaggy. Mm-hmm. Fun little mystery. I don't know. It's a continuation of the series that you know that I talk about I think every single month that I'm I'm never really disappointed. I think the first issue of this second run of this series I said was okay. Uh okay. but that's like of the now so there were 12 issues and then three for so there's been 15 issues of Batman Scooby Doo Mysteries. One was it's okay and I think everything else at least was good. So it passes I'm, the Lauer standard. It did. I have a oh the Lauer standard it's a low standard i hear it's a low standard yes i've heard so uh, the fun thing about this is that i don't know because each issue is just contained and standalone so i have no idea what's coming next until next month comes around so it's a fun you know looking forward to seeing just the cover because you know a few episodes ago when i talked to the one of the writers for this series ivan cohen you know and he kind of said that too of Basically, you're going to get the villain on the cover to help tease, you know, to sell and buy that book and stuff. So it is fun when I go looking th- when I do look through it, what's available for us to read. And I see like this one was like Court of Owls. I'm like, oh, OK, I don't think they've done a Court of Owls with Scooby-Doo yet. Let's see what they do. Oh, and Batuzzi's on the cover. OK, so that's I mean, that's a fun, ridiculous Batuzzi. thing to end on. <laughs> yeah, let's all let's all dance. I so, thought it was cute how they in- in- incorporated that. I mean, I feel like, yeah. you know, that's definitely 
that's definitely that Batman, right? Like mm-hmm. it's definitely it fits this vibe. The 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 light night, as they like to call it. A light night with a yellow oval. Yeah. You can't be mad. And they, they do fit a good design too. Of, so when Bruce Wayne shows up in this and how he looks, and then even that Batman, they do a really good job making it seem like, you know, late sixties, early seventies Batman, like in animation. Yeah. You know, they make that that look really good. And I do appreciate that, that it's not trying to fit the, you know, like the rebirth Batman into this or anything. It's like, no, no, no. Batman at the time, he kind of looked like this. So let's make sure we adapt that in the comics. So I appreciate it. Uh, a book that I don't read, but you do, Peter. I am Batman number 16. Mm-hmm. Tell me about it. This one is uh, really deep. It, it, a lot, Lots going on within the Fox family. Uh, uh, some deep secrets are being revealed that no one knew until the end of the issue. Uh, Batman is facing a little adversity with the police as he's been since he's come to New York, even though he works for them. Um, and I actually believe this series is ending within an issue or two, so... Okay, I was just going to ask you. I thought that we came across that the Iron Batman was ending soon. Was it seventeen? I think because this is sixteen, so I think maybe it ends next issue. And I'm interested to see what they do um, post Dark Crisis and everything. And I know Jason was supposed to have a bigger part with five uh, G that never panned out back in the day. Um, we'll see what they do with this character, this version of Batman. And uh, you know, I have no clue, but um, you know, I enjoyed the stuff in New York. Mm-hmm. I didn't read the whole series, but uh, I think it was like from issue like ten or, or nine or ten on. I dug it. Nice. Okay. Uh, it looks like there's going to be a. I am Batman eighteen. Well, so when's it ending then? I thought it was ending soon. Maybe eighteen the end. Maybe eighteen. I'm not seeing anything. Yeah, I'm seeing a a preview of seventeen, a preview of eighteen, and then. I'm not seeing anything for a 19. You should so. Google, like, I, Bat- I am Batman 19. That's what we should do. I am. I did. Oh. I did the game. Oh, my God. He's doing it. Come on, Peter. And what do you got? What's the info over there? Don't That's as far as, as we got. So, Maybe we'll update next month. 18 might be the, the grand finale. All so, right. once, you know, everything gets released in trades, then I might check it out because you, you have been... It's been it's pretty, pretty... You've good. had a pretty consistent pretty track good. record with this. So, it's, it's good. And so check it out on my favorite app of all time. Hoopla. I'm going to go there. You know who else really likes that app is uh, Paul Herman. P-Thug. Yeah. P-thug. Yeah. Because it is an amazing app. If anybody, anybody listening, if you can, if your library is involved in Hoopla and you can do that, I highly, highly, highly recommend it. It's amazing. Peter. Anyway. Wrapping up December 13th is up. a very highly anticipated story. Uh, for the comic book world, you, uh, reuniting Todd McFarlane and Greg Capullo for Batman and Spawn. Did you read this one, Peter? I did. You did. Okay. My quick thoughts. I don't know much about Spawn. Mm-hmm. I know visually he looks awesome. I haven't read comics with Spawn except for the from the nineties, the two Batman and Spawn crossover books. Uh, I know that. Every artist did a variant cover for this book. Uh, there's some really awesome looking covers. Uh, well, the main cover I thought, of course, was great. And then, yeah, a lot of the variants, I mean, a lot of variants that were also really cool. And the story itself, I felt like was just a like another like blockbuster kind of story of it just it looked pretty. I don't the story didn't really stick with me. Uh, I couldn't even tell you exactly what the story was other than they came, you know, face to face and they fought and the images were great. <laughs> but overall, it's like, I don't know, fun, I guess, which is funny because it's very dark and kind of violent and stuff. And again, the Court of Owls shows up. <laughs> yep. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of that's kind of it, and that's not none of that's supposed to meant to be, you know, like a, a negative or anything like that. It's just kind of like oh, it's a it's a good looking book. Uh, I read it, and then kind of moved on. Um, your experience with Spawn is very similar to mine. Like, I haven't read any Spawn outside of the two crossovers uh, w- with uh, McFarland. 
Uh, and that's really my only exposure. That in the movie, I don't, and I don't even remember that. I just remember John Leguizamo was the fat clown. We all remember John Leguizamo from that movie, right? <laughs> yeah, that's all I remember. Um, but and a killer soundtrack. <laughs> and I don't even remember soundtrack. that. Okay, I'll have to check that out. But yeah, like I don't know anything about Spawn. I don't care about Spawn. So like this really doesn't interest me. I would be more interested if McFarlane was drawing the book instead of Capullo. Mm, um, okay. I just prefer McFarlane's art to Capullo's. But uh, I didn't buy this. I read it digitally. Uh, it's a cool idea. It's just not my thing. The action was great. It seemed to have uh, some good detective work for Batman to figure out or whatnot. Um, uh, you know, I don't know if I'll actually keep up with this, but uh, you know, I'm happy for those who are enjoying it. I feel like uh, Eric Carter is. This is like I hope this was under the tree for him on Christmas morning because I feel like he would love this. <laughs> he, I think he enjoyed this. I don't remember. He's the biggest Capullo fan asked. I know, so like I would just, I just assume he's loving it. I don't. This is. I don't think this is like an ongoing series or anything. I know that they teased something at the end, but I don't think anything was announced that this was an ongoing series. So I don't know if another part's coming. I know they left it to. Oh, really? It's, it's I don't know what shot? that means. Oh, interesting. So uh, maybe I missed. Maybe I missed something. I and we know that that's definitely uh, probable that I've missed something. Uh, I'd say so. <laughs> I and here's the thing I'm I'm like you I didn't buy it digitally uh I did see I was kind of going back and forth there's a Jason Fabic cover that is it looked really good fantastic Francesca Matino was his cover like uh, fantastic and then Sean Murphy's cover was fantastic I thought the main covers from Coppola and Mark Farlam were fantastic I think it was just an overwhelming I can't choose one and I'd already read the book beforehand I'm like Maybe I don't buy need to pick all. it up yet. Buy what you buy. So, and then it's uh, so they just released the hardcover. So Eric Carter did tell me about this part. So I know that they just released a hardcover like reprinting of the two from the nineties. Oh really? And, uh, yeah. And then I looked up in, in in April. He told me that in April they're releasing a deluxe edition that has the two from the nineties and this one in it. So okay, cool. I mean, cool for anybody that maybe passed on it, but then also it's kind of like, ah, son of a bitch. If people did buy, son of a bitch, son of a bitch, buy the newly released hardcover and this this one, and then there's a collecting all of them version coming out in a couple months. <laughs> uh I mean, let's be honest. If this was the long Halloween. Ryan Lauer would have bought two copies of each. Well, that's true. So I mean, I did when they did the long Halloween special. Exactly. You know, so exactly. Uh, R.I.P. They himself. know how to get you guys. They know how to get you. You gotta yep. show your willpower, flex your might. <laughs> be I like Hasbulla, don't be a sheep, be a goat. So the next the next Tuesday, December twentieth, <laughs> got a couple Hasbulla. here that came out. Let's talk first, Pete. Um, Batman, Superman, World's Finest, number ten, cover of the month. I'd say for regular covers, this cover is exceptional. Okay, regular cover is great. Variant what about cover. this Libra Mayhu variant? <laughs> <laughs> variant cover. It's a Christmas cover with Superman singing with Paul McCartney. Uh, oh, really? That was that fun. You, that's cool. Yeah. And then another variant cover was like the Superman 78, Batman 89, Worlds Collide cover. Oh, wow. I which I thought that was out there. That's which cool. I thought that was kind of fun. Yeah. I'll have to uh, check that one now. So those are, those are fun. Uh, the issue itself, it just kind of had, I think it started to go towards, I don't know, it was all right for me. Really? Yeah. Just, I don't know. I'm fascinated by the story. Gotcha. Okay. Everything about David and like uh, the Joker, the key, all that stuff. Like, these are like, I was like, I really like the key. He's like one of my favorite, like out there villains. So I'm 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 really into this and that and you get the the eighty nine oval and then it's like it ends with like oh is that Magog and I'm like oh wow that's interesting I never yeah I didn't know what that was supposed to mean oh my god you knew who the character was right he looks familiar you see I love it when you sit here and act as if like I'm I'm some (laughs) dummy 
and I don't read comics. I don't know. Well, it's like you uh, know my sensibility. I don't read a ton uh, of the science can you, can you, space uh, other stuff. I stick in Gotham because I love Gotham. This disappointment in my voice. Gotham is well. grounded and it's great. And I love Batman. This is a freaking uh, Batman podcast, Pete. And I'm sorry that I don't know about a character named McGog and how he was on the planet Mernicado for Docker and it fought the Mexicans and took over the world technology science blah, 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 blah. sorry to ryan, ryan lauer still got some work to do um yeah. but yeah <laughs> i don't i look at this at the end and i don't i have an interest to explore and see what this character's about <laughs> yeah i mean actually when magog was making his appearances i didn't even really like him so but i want to see where it ties in i'm interested you know i hear it's all connected dan mora might be the most beautiful artist in the world right now, like oh my god! I mean, I, I mean, I'm reviewing Ivan Reese on Detective, so that's great as well. But uh, Mr. Moore is probably my f- like like the hottest one out there. Um, but yeah, I'm even, really into this. I'm really into even, this even when the story goes places that I'm like not that interested in. Uh, I do get drawn in by the art though, because yeah, Mora is good. exceptional. Uh, looks like this. Like I forget. Like, and that's how I know it's it's a bummer, and I'm not I'm like eh, because I'm not remembering fully what all is happening, and I don't remember this new character's name, uh, the the yeah. one that this whole arc's been about, David, David, the alien boy. Yeah, I mean I do you like don't like little alien boys from other planets, huh? That's a weird sentence. Uh, it's, a little, it's a little holes in with you, but uh. Yeah, it's okay. It concludes. This art concludes next month. Let's see how it concludes and see where they take the story after that. How do you, how do you feel about uh, female superheroes there, Holzman? <laughs> <laughs> I like them more than Eric Holzman does. <laughs> Jimmy Long Island. Jimmy oh. Long Island. Um, Batman versus Robin, number four. Pete, this oh, book. Yeah. Remember how we, I keep telling you that like in the past few issues, it is like, I don't know, maybe... Maybe I'm kind of starting to be done with this, and then more. something happens, and then I'm like, and then they got me. It's like right when I felt like maybe I'm kind of done with this book, and oh, they got like me. Al Pacino and Godfather 3. Yeah. This book didn't have that moment to reel me back in. I think this one finally took it way like too far out there that I'm just like, eh. didn't enjoy this one a whole lot. Really? Yeah. It got too fantastical and. It definitely goes know. there. It definitely goes there. And it's just not, that's not my, that's not my mood. That's not my preference with Batman. I'll go along for it and try and read it. But then on, like, I got to be honest too. And it's like, oh, it went there and it didn't, It it's not my thing. It's just mm-hmm. not my thing. So it's, it's a weird thing of how, I don't know what this is even leading to. I don't know how many, how uh, many this issues. Lead- this is leading to the next event, which is like it's called Lazarus Island, Lazarus Planet, or something like that. Yeah. So, so Lazarus, and I love it when they do this stuff too, though. Uh, to be continued in Lazarus Planet Alpha Number One, which means there's going to be an Alpha, a Beta, a Zeta, an Omega, and then a new series that continues on in like. Uh, yeah, I don't get the whole Alpha Omega pool. thing. When did that start? Oh, okay. I don't know. It they, started like a few years ago. The titling of that stuff, it's like, you guys need to stop. Because remember, I don't know if you remember, uh, leading up to, was it Metal? And there was like two or three different, just completely weirdly named one-offs leading up to it. And it was like, how are you guys expecting people to follow along when you don't have like a banner or a title? You're, You're just hoping people do the, like really do the work to figure out what the they're road to, to Lazarus next. planet. Like that's what they yeah. used to do like the nineties. At least like that's something. So yeah, the next one is Lazarus planet alpha number one, and then return for Batman versus Robin number five in February. Uh-huh. So I don't know. We'll see how I feel. I up. personally, so, how do you feel about this book? I, I enjoy this. This issue doesn't okay. really stand out like the other ones do, but like I, I had a lot of fun with it. The story overall, like I've been kind of following this story from the beginning before I knew what was going on. Like I just was naturally reading the breadcrumbs. This, like what Wayne and Williamson have kind of been working in tandem for this la- back since like Robin, you know, like it, it, they've been kind of teasing this whole Lazarus thing. So I don't know if Wade's going to be a part of it in the future. It seems like he is. 
Um, so that'd be cool to have Williamson and Wade together kind of plan this next uh, big DC arc. But uh, I was into it. It was cool. It definitely got really fantastical when Batman puts on Fate's helmets. That's interesting. But I like the whole Grandma Al Ghul thing. Uh, I, you know, uh, the devil. Uh, you know, it, the Damien stuff really got to me when he was fighting Batman. I thought that was cool. Um, I think that that's the strength. Talia, Damien, Batman. That's definitely yeah, like, a strength. In that I've been issue. riding those guys pretty much throughout the story because you know, involving you know, fake Sabak and all this mm-hmm. other stuff. Is it's it, you know. I, I want to see where it goes with the Lazarus aspect. Like that's where it's really interesting. I mean, again, like when you involve Lazarus pitch, you're going to get a little mystical. So I get what they were doing. Um, but uh, I'm kind of hooked on this. Yeah. Like this issue wasn't like, Oh my God, it's amazing. But I was like, this is a solid issue in, in, a, in a pretty solid story. So I can't wait to see what happens next. See, and I'm not fully, I know when Rod's all goals and involved, there's a good chance for Lazarus pits and stuff. I accepted well, that a long time ago. And there are some fantastic Roz stories that involve the Lazarus Pit that don't right. go like way too far out. The Lazarus Pit is as far crazy as it goes. Yeah. And I and because I've accepted that, it's like that's okay. Um, this one also, I I kind of feel like something happens with Batman. They didn't really give it time to breathe. You know, yeah, it was like it, it could have been resolved just in the next panel. You know? yeah, I mean, yeah, it was really quick. Resolution's like, okay, yeah, but so, it, that's something I don't want to see dragged on. I feel like I've been there done before, so I'll do it, it quick. Yeah, I know. Yeah, get it in. Get it in. Yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> uh, so I, I'll continue, but I'm not, this isn't on a must. Instead, it is a little like, ah, got another one of these to read. Yeah. Pete's already picked up and moved on to the next issue. Batman Urban Legends number twenty two. Mm-hmm. How do you feel? This has been this is your series. Uh to be honest, goddamn Cordalis makes another appearance. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, I'm gonna go four for four on this one. Even the book, the story I didn't like from last month, um, Arkham Academy was really good. Um, I a great Nightwing story. Uh, mm-hmm. solid Batman anarchy story, uh, a solid Batman murder mystery. I just, again, Batman urban legends just continues to knock it out of the park, uh, variety and, uh, quality. So I'm, I'm going to four for four here. This was, uh, this is one hell of this one hell of a Batman urban legends, arguably the best overall issue from front page from uh, cover to cover here. Um, uh, number 22. That Nightwing story. I really had to double check the credits cause I thought it was Bruno Redondo at first. I was like, oh, is, yeah. this, is this just it like fits, the Nightwing book? But no, it's Jamal right Campbell. Fits right in. But yeah, I'm I'm with you. I didn't read the Arkham Academy one because I, I did try that one and I just wasn't a fan, so I skipped it, that this one. This issue's much better. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm kind of with you on the, the other stories I thought were good. Uh, really like the look of that second story, Utility. Uh, like the art. Now, Lucas Silvera. It, name does not sound familiar and art doesn't seem familiar. I really like like, so this is a good introduction to me of that art and a yeah. uh, big fan. And then, yeah, the, the murder club, which has been the continuing story the past couple issues and resolves. So what next is that? Month. That's th- three, four appearances quarter hours this month. I think we're at three night watch, uh, Scooby, no, night watch, Scooby, do Batman spawn. Batman and spawn. this is where at four, it's four, four <laughs> quarter hours, four appearances this month. Almost as many quarter of house books as Batman books. Close, but yeah. So I I think the the murder club is definitely a really interesting story. Um, yeah. So, which that's at least been a strength of Batman Urban Legends is that they do have at least one continuing story going in each issue that is more yeah. most likely been solid. There's always an outlier, so uh, there isn't always a grifter. So that's good. Thank God the Jim Lee end date. He won't let us forget grifter. That's for sure. Never, never. Although Rosenberg, Matthew Rosenberg has a Hellcats book I have not checked out, and Grifter's all over that. And I'm like, hey, enjoy. We trust, we trust Matthew Rosenberg. I trust him. I'm not going to read it, but I trust him. Yeah. (laughs) Final Tuesday of the month, the 27th. Oh, God. We've got to start it, Pete. Oops. Detective Comics, number 1067. You know, for the Um, love of Hasbro. Ron V. Ivan, Ivan Reese. Uh, a fun story, though, when I was reading this, you know, in the our digital 
early looks that we get. We get a look at all the variant covers for each issue as well. And the the variant for this one was from Jim Lee. Uh, I don't know. Have you seen this? Oh, the one it's like the the tumbler, like yeah, that means Nolan, from Santa Nolan's Claus. back. That's yes. Jim Lee telling oh, us Nolan's coming back connected. for Dark Knight Four. This is an awesome cover, and I did post that on Twitter, and I got some feedback from some people that had said, "Hey, this was like a this was created years ago and was given to people that worked on DC stuff and like around holiday times, like on a, a gift or something." So it's really cool to me that they this isn't like Jim Lee just finished this and they put it out there. It's like, this is a great piece of art. The it's people who dated, got this a long time ago. Mm, no, I like don't see no it date on the cover. Sometimes they date these things. No, I don't see it, but I, I don't know. I'm appreciative that they made this art from years ago into a variant cover that is like, I don't know. That's such a freaking awesome cover. I think I love it. I, I agree. I agree. But uh, anyways, the story itself, take it away. I picked up the regular cover because I like Mr. Freeze. Um, just you know, same complaints I have uh, as always. Like the the meat and potatoes of the story is kind of just bleh, but like it's like it's uh, it's like it's like something wrapped in bacon. Like there's always something around the story <laughs> that I really really love, and then the story itself isn't really that good. Uh, because the Mister Free stuff is fantastic. Yeah. Um, and in my review on Batman on film, I compared it to uh, Tomasi's early run. Uh, on this title, Detective Comics, where he reinvented the Arkham Knight, and I was like, "Oh man, like if you could, you're making this like character I don't really like to care about kind of cool, but like I can't wait till you get a classic villain." And every time Rom gets his hands on Two Face or Mister Freeze, it's done really well. Mm-hmm. And I wish that was what the story was about. Instead, I get this, I don't know, six arm, six eyed, you know, Victoria's Secret model, and this like this prince. And this werewolf, and I just don't care about these people or what's going on, you know? Like, in this issue, it was like, I don't know, six eyes and some guy with six arms. I was like, what is going on? Yeah. It's such a it's such a waste of Mr. Reese's talents. But there's some cool panels. If you're looking for the lock screen, c- crowd will be really happy. There's a nice little splash page of Batman uh, jumping into a fiery Gotham City. Uh, there's some cool shots of Mr. Freeze and his ice gun. Uh, you know, but uh, overall, the story is still just kind of, but you know, whatever. Yep, I'm with you. The loved the freeze stuff. Yeah, like I, I did. I just, I loved that. I loved their exchange and why freeze, you know, saved Batman and stuff like that, and his reason, all that. Just it really works. And I know that I feel like freeze is a hard character to do because they just did it so well. It's got to be Nora based. And if you stray from that, it feels like it's not in character yeah. for him. So I think that they did a, uh, he, Rom did a really good job with him. And yeah, like you said, the the two face stuff. And it's just it is that in between. I'm totally accepting of new villains, new characters, and everything. I am. Uh, this is I don't know. It's I I just don't enjoy it. That main yep. family coming in. Uh, I'm I'm not attached to him at all. I. Don't need them. I just don't. I don't care about them, Ugh, which sucks. Go to Bloodhaven. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's it's just not doing it for me. And then yeah, out of nowhere, adding that it's ten eyed whatever something and yeah, I don't know. It's just not not my thing. So and then something that is kind of strange. It feels like strange spots to end issues too. Uh, never really feels like oh great tease or something like this one is just. I don't know. I'm just I'm I'm used to it now. Not shitting on the title, but I'm just kind of used to it now of like this detective story isn't it's not doing it for me. So I don't yeah. have high hopes going into each issue because I'm just like I'm just not really enjoying it. How'd you, how'd you feel about the backup? Uh backup loved the story. In and out of I thought, the I thought, I thought this issue was good. Yeah. I like the idea of the story. I think it's really interesting. Issue two was kind of a little of a meh for me, but uh, um, this one was good. So some, it's just like moments of, so the first page of that backup, the like at the bottom panel yeah. and leading into the next page, when the art goes that way, I'm like, that's kind of ugly to me. It's not really nice to look at, but then it Art's does like kind funky. of rebounds when it goes to a little more like yeah. back in the real world and stuff. But yeah. like I said, the, the story, I think trying to tell like see harvey's duality and so i think that's awesome i, I think that's great i, I like agree it. 
Moving on now. Moving on up. Moving on up. Batman, the audio adventures number four. Continuation of a very fun book that looks very pretty. I like this. Uh, Your boy Ozzy's on the cover. As he should be. It's him. I I loved the, I mean, not big moments, but I I loved him and Robin talking. Yeah, that was really cool. It was awesome. really cool. Still love the Batman design. Still looks very Darwin Cook. Uh, <laughs> I love how he tried to bribe Robin with like uh, onion rings and chicken tenders. <laughs> Pizza, burgers, <laughs> tacos, chicken tenders. And I forget what his comment was when he was trying to you know, B minus tacos. You didn't haul me haul me in here to feed me B minus tacos. What's this all about? <laughs> like, <laughs> and the Robin Dick Grayson's like, this is getting weird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just, I like it. I really like it. And Batman has a lot to do too, as he's running around chasing after killer croc. I really like Which I love. what they're doing with Which croc too. Yeah. You know, he's got, he's got his baby doll around and we see that he was pretty much like messed with by Hugo strange. So that's bringing in more characters from the Batman mythos. So yeah, this is another, another solid issue Four there's going to be seven total. This is number four. So we're over halfway through this and uh, keep it going because I'm, I'm a big fan. Yeah, I mean Hugo Strange, Killer Croc, the Penguin, Batman, and Robin. Like, this is great, and they they've kind of cut down a little bit on the drooling of the Penguin. I hope they, uh, they listen to the show. <laughs> yeah, because um, that that was one of my major complaints. Like, I don't need to, he doesn't need to be drooling everywhere. It looks it just looks weird. But uh, I'm really enjoying this. I mean, I just it's like you. I'm starting to hear the cues and the musical tones of the of the podcast as I read this. Yeah, so. yeah, <laughs> yeah. I am uh, I'm really into this and I uh I can't wait for volume three because I really think there's gonna be another one. You think so? Uh okay. yeah. I mean I'm pretty sure this will lead up to the next season of the podcast. Like this happens before. Oh so yeah, I, I gotta keep going with the podcast. I'm behind. Yeah, the podcast is great. Really far really behind. Is. Uh the comic, I'm I'm up to date on the comic. And the comic where are is you on great. the podcast? Oh, uh, season one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but where? I mean there's, like, there's only like eight episodes. Episode three. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You are way behind. Yeah, way behind on that part. But yeah, this this comic, I I really really like this comic. Great surprise. Um, and not because of of talent. It's just I don't know. It was like, oh, Batman the Auto Adventures. It's a it's a mini series. All right, let's check it out. And it's just made me happy every issue. I look. I really Somewhere look forward Gotham to reading. City. Somewhere in Gotham City. Right now <laughs> is reading Marvel comics. Another surprising series. You ready? Number five Here we of go. the Court of Owls. Uh, Batman, Gotham Knights, <laughs> Gilded City, number three. <laughs> Court of Owls, Gotham City outskirts, 1847. Yeah. Fifth appearance of the Court of Owls this month in a Batman book. Is and I know people... Tired of the Court of Owls? Anyone, anyone else tired of the Court of Owls? People probably could go back into other months and be like, hey, Penguin showed up in this many comics in Batman this month. Joker showed up this many and stuff. So I get it, I get it. But it's just kind of funny. It's where uh, we became aware of the Court of Owls. Uh, at, you brought it up at the beginning of this conversation, and now it's like Holy we crap, have had a somewhat of a Riddler resurgence, but that's just because we came out of a movie. Yeah, you know, like they got strike while it's hot. Yeah, yeah. But like Corda, this month has been the month of Owl. <laughs> the month of Owls. Uh, this this is a surprising series too. Of I didn't know how it would. It's it's a you know they're titling it Gotham Knights to capitalize on the game release and stuff, but right. I think. I don't know. I think the comic, the story is fun. I do like the flashbacks of this. I mean, it's almost, you know, Batman in the 1840s, which it's, I don't know. That's, it's fine with me. We'll see. We'll see where it heads. Um, I don't, it doesn't stick with me of like, this is like, oh my God, this is the most epic story or anything, but it, it's just enjoyable. It's I do look forward to reading the next, the next chapter. And it does have I like it. great teaming up of Batman, yeah. Robin, Nightwing, you know, yeah. and, and, um, like I'm looking through because I read this a couple weeks ago. It's just great saving like heroic scenes. Yeah, uh, Batgirl think... working with Batgirl and stuff too. So it's just I don't know. I'll shut up now. I like it. I like it's the Batman fun. stuff. I don't, the stuff in the past I can do without. That's just me personally. I don't okay. really like that stuff. Sure, but I think the the modern day Batman stuff is really good. And uh, you know, I'm again, I'm curious. Like it's I'm bummed because I can't play the game because I don't have a. I didn't drop a lot of coin on a console, so like I'm a little far behind. So this is kind of where I'm getting my Batman Gotham Knights from until yeah. the amazing CW show. Um, 
but uh yeah no overall i like the book i'm with you i like the teamwork and everything the modern day mm-hmm. stuff is really what keeps me reading this gotcha solid very solid yeah uh, something that has been better than solid is batman beyond the white knight number seven didn't get this didn't get an issue last month got one this month and then the grand finale i think is advertised in the back of this of february oh wow so we got to wait two months for the big grand finale and no surprise here, Peter. This issue this month, I loved it. Yeah, I, good. This coloring, I know it was a variant for issue six, but Blight, the way that Blight pops on this cover, my God. Oh, this and is then a even variant? in the book. No, th- no, no, sorry. There was a variant of Blight for okay. issue six okay. that I wanted to get, but it was it was expensive. It was pricey. And it was like a basically like a black cover, but then Blight just head on. And so okay. he was green and popped. And okay. I think here, the coloring of Blight, just there's something with it of Murphy and Dave Stewart combining to make him look great. And then even within the, in the comic, he looks great. But yeah, th- I think there's, I don't know if there's art for sale or, and I saw it, or if it's just because like the back of the book, but the opening image, I love that opening image because I think, yeah. So in the back, as Murphy's been doing with the series of behind the scenes. And it just does like a dialogue less page and stuff in, in black and white. So the image alone just has a ton of like Batman history with it. That I just, I love it. You know, you could look at that image and you know, everything that that means. And that's usually yeah. when I talk about favorite panels and stuff like that, it's like, that's my, that's my thing. I love um, the Zatara. Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Background. yeah. Yep. So I really like that. The color scheme almost like a sepia with blue on it looks looks great yep. but it ties into what's happening in the present you know of the resurgence of of dick grayson which yes. when i got to interview murphy for bof you know he he'd said basically of like dick's gonna seem like a dick but don't worry i gotta tell you because i think that people are gonna be annoyed or upset about it like he's he's gonna come back like he's gonna have a turning point i always trust him i always trust him. yeah and you know, I've had my complaints about Grayson throughout the run. Sure. Uh, I think that this, but I think this is a great penultimate issue. You know, um, I wrote in my review how much I really liked it. Of It wasn't necessarily the most action heavy, but that didn't matter because Murphy's pacing of a story, everything builds on each, on each other. Yeah. It relates. Mm-hmm. Nothing's wasted. Everything means something. I got a on leather wings vibe with the, beyond terry chasing the batmobile okay, like yeah. like that little vibe and then i loved when he gets wrapped around in a net he looks like a bat with their wings down yes uh, which i thought was a great attention to detail uh all of that was just great and then what he does with the story of bringing basically this the white knight universe's bat family together uh-huh. uh and then now they are all seeing joker which is pretty which was the crazy biggest mind f in a yeah. comic kind of because like he pops up and if you you know a veteran reader looks at the page mm-hmm. and he's like everyone's everyone notices the joker it's not just like you know uh todd robin is literally shooting an arrow at him mm-hmm. <laughs> like i like and you can see barbara sees him and like it's it's noticeable and then the next panel like it gets explained but i was like when did the joker become sentient <laughs> It's like, when did this happen? Did I forget something last issue? And I, I like how Murphy explains it in the next page. But I was like, oh my God, what happened? What is going yeah. on? The Joker's, everyone sees the Joker. <laughs> everyone sees Jack Napier. So I um, thought that was really interesting. Um, yeah. But yeah, I really dug this issue. I need a Batman White Knight Nightwing action figure because I love, I have now grown to love Nightwing in this like leather biker jacket. Yeah. I think it's a cool look. I really do. I'm yeah. still I still miss Batman without a cowl. Mm-hmm. But I love I like this new Bat family. I like the new Robin. I like I like both of the new Robins actually. You know, Duke being a Robin and uh what's her name? I can't remember her name. She's great too. I love her. Again? Yeah. Uh and, and oh man, just whew, Todd McFarlane's gonna be busy making some toys. Yeah. Hopefully. <laughs> love it. Um gonna be bittersweet when that last issue comes out because we, he did say that there's a spinoff coming, uh, but as far as continuing, like the main book story or whatever, I think we have, he leaves breadcrumbs at the end of the next issue, okay. but we don't know if there will be a continuation of that. 
Uh-huh. And if there is, when that'll be. So it's a little like, ah, oh, damn, the series is ending. And I don't know when we're going to get more right. of the main story. But also, all good things come to an end. Uh, so pressure's on, but I mean, and the guy, no pressure. Guys nailed it for me from the first White Knight. Yeah, no, issue, good. So. I thought the I middle part was a little murky for me, but the the bookends were really nice. Yeah. So, um, and now previously known as honorable mentions, but Ryan Haas uh, came up with the idea of calling this now uh, Batman and Friends. Talk about some Batman related books. Uh, the Joker, the man who stopped laughing, number three, uh, with one of Lieber Mayo's greatest covers I think he has ever done. Love this cover so much. It's so great. The book inside matches the cover. Uh, Rosenberg, I, I love the series. Period. Love Isn't it. he great? Isn't he like so good? Amazing. Yep. Love this. Um, each when each issue, so I know this is only issue three, yeah. but I want to go read issues one and two and then read three. And then for issue four, it's like I want to read issue one, two, three, and then four. I, I just yeah. want to keep rereading it and catch everything because I do. I just think that this book rocks. Uh, your girl punchline so showed crazy. up in it. I love her. She's amazing. Rosenberg did an interview, I forget with who, uh, where he talked about the backups are doing something, and he hasn't come across anybody who's caught it yet. So I read this backup trying to see if there's anything I can pick up on, and I, I'm not sure yet. All I, like, it's, it's every issue is just a Joker finding a new girlfriend. Like, I don't know find a he's... new girlfriend has a new death so his his or his story is multiple yeah. choice but otherwise i don't i don't know but i love what francesca francavilla is doing yeah. with it I, I i love the backups and that's why i just think that this issue is like this series is a must buy each month this might be like the most definitive joker story ever told when it comes to an end I yeah think. we'll see um i, I, like, no I think idea. it's building up to that like i got i just got a feeling yeah. i hope i hope you're right I don't know. Like what he does with the Legion of Doom is just like wow. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know how many. (laughs) I don't know how many issues this is going to end up being. I've come across nothing that says how long we're going to go with this. Me neither. But I, I hope that it there is an ending in sight. There's, there's no reason not to trust Matthew Rosenberg. (laughs) Like we love Matthew Rosenberg, so we do. uh, Excited for that. You Gotham should get City. him on the Batman book club. I'd love to. Matthew Rosenberg, if you're listening, I'd love to talk Batman and Joker with you. Gotham City, year one. Issue number three, written by Tom King, art by Phil Hester. Uh, another great chapter. I love the vibe of this book. I kind of, it kind of was fuzzy to me what all happened in the second book. Uh, nobody's fault, just mine. I wasn't remembering, right. but uh, love. Yeah, I, I love this series too. More than I thought I was gonna, to be honest. This is like, Not, oh man, Tom King's so good. He's writing so many good stories. He is. I just told, I just texted uh, the Bat Boys about. I finally just read Strange Adventures, and I have nothing, no knowledge on Adam Strange at all. And of man, course. did I really, really like that book too. That was that was great. Highly recommended. Not Batman. Well, Batman's in it. There you go. Batman. Uh, so we're gonna be on the Batman book club. Um. I don't think he plays a big enough factor in it to to count it on the Batman book club. But yeah, this story, this is this is great. Uh I, I love this. I don't have anything else to I say. I just about like, it. I could follow Slam Bradley anywhere. Like I love Slam Bradley mm-hmm. stories. Um he's one of my favorite characters. So this story is such a treat, and just to watch him do his due diligence and get on this case is just it just feels so noir. Like I feel like does. I should be smoking a cigar and drinking bourbon <laughs> while like reading this in black. Why and white. not? Next month when we talk about issue number four, which Pete yeah. has in his hands right now. Um, yeah, I do. Why don't Why don't you do that? So we'll, set, do that. We'll, we'll turn on some old school. And then music. the ending is just so good. like, oh. mm-hmm. like it's like oh man, there's no happy ending in Gotham. So it's it's just crazy. It's a it's a crazy bonkers tale. It really is. Yep. Uh, oozes great noir, love it, and then Poison Ivy number seven. Uh, it's a new, basically, a new start. It feels feels as almost it's kicking off a brand new 
everything with like a quick nod to what's happened in the previous six. And that's yeah. because this originally was going to be a six issue series and it did so well that I think after issue two dropped or something, they announced it was expanding to 12. So uh, yeah, new start here with poison Ivy. Um, still really enjoyable. I'm, I'm good with it. Um, what else do I got? Nightwing uh, number 99. Oh, you have some to say. Okay. Oh no, I was like, I, I really dig this story too. Um, I'm interested to see what's really going down here. Like, is Ivy really turning over a new leaf? Like, it doesn't seem yeah. so. And then she, well, <laughs> she's kind of all over a new leaf. Peter. I no pun intended. Um, I'm interested to find out more about this lady and like, you mm-hmm. know, that she turns Ivy into like this, I don't know, this plant thing. And I, it just, I was like, oh wow, she seems to really got the better of Ivy. So I want to see what's going on here. And I don't think we've seen the end of the Floranic man. I just got a feeling he's going to pop up again. Somehow. Can yeah, never go somehow, away. some way. Tell them. Mm-hmm. About the dog gay. Doggy. Anyways. No. Dog gay. Oh. Snoop Dogg. Oh, dog. Oh, dog. Snoop Dogg. Dog. Somehow, some way. Nightwing number 99. Right. Uh, fun issue. Good issue. Solid issue. Good lead up into what's going to happen for issue 100, Peter. I don't know mm-hmm. if it's oversized. I feel like it's got to be because they everybody loves to celebrate, you know, milestones. That's a milestone. Um, yeah, I mean, we've said it before, and it's not a slight at all. Nightwing book is just a very comfortable read. I don't, I don't it's, dread it. Um, nothing's. It's weird because I love Tom Taylor. This isn't amazing, but it's damn good. You know, yeah. like there's, it's really good, and he, he incorporates a lot of let's see Nightwing's past into his future and he's blending some things and he's taking some of his own risks. So it's, it's probably like, it's always the safest bet that you're just really just going to enjoy this, but it's not going to mm-hmm. blow your mind away. Yeah. That's how I feel. Um, And I'm really digging it. And uh, you know, I, I'm, I don't like it when they kill off major villains. I know Blockbuster's dead. I always Blockbuster and Deathstroke always appear to be like one, two in terms of Nightwing villains. So to see his like, Basically, number two adversary taken out. I want to see more about this heart. What is this guy called? Heart attack? Heartbreak? Heartless. Heartless. <laughs> heart What's this guy's name? Heart attack? Ah. Give me some heart attack. Heart attack. <laughs> heart attack. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, like, I, I, again, really looking forward to it every month. Uh, and, uh, you know, I don't know what I like better, the story or the art, but it, they, they're both doing a great job. Yeah. Very solid, uh, which they have been since. Redondo hasn't been on every issue since 78. He's been on most. Uh, Taylor has been. And yeah, it's just been a, a solid book ever since he took over. Yeah. Um, one Pete that I admittedly, uh, I read the past two months, GCPD, the blue wall, number three. I actually uh, didn't get a chance to read this. One. I didn't get the chance to read this one either. And I know you and I said like, we got to be in the right, right mindset. Cause this, this series is heavy. It was so just definitely time, <laughs> time. And then, yeah, definitely when I can, and, and I will read it. For sure. We'll get it. We'll get but, it next month. We'll get it. In there you go. Month. We'll get it in. We'll get it in. Uh, then the Riddler year one, number two. Dude. Uh, great series. Uh, great chapter here. But Paul, oh uh, Dana. But let me say something here. I Dana. think the Batman from the Batman universe is going to be the most complete Batman we've ever seen. Between yeah, sure. this Riddler story, the film series, the spinoff series, the uh the, the 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 prequel book i mean are, have we not gotten it all from this universe already in just two years like they have given us so much more really. is coming yeah and as i say like, the best is still yet to come like we're still at least hopefully two movies away maybe another uh, you know if penguin does well which i think it will but mm-hmm. like man this riddler year one story it's like we're really seeing what went down mm-hmm. when you know he's discovering all these renewal issues and I am totally like invested in Paul Dano as a comic book writer. Like, I think he gets it. I think he I love it. because it's kind of going to, it's, it's only two issues, but it's a third of the way through now. Uh, quick plug, our, our pal, Trey Jackson, uh, reviewing the series on Batman on film. So go to Batman on film after you read it and check out his reviews. He does. A Cause you need an intellectual job. to review this. I yeah. He's a, and he is a, as Garrett always likes to say, a learned gentleman. Yes. Is Trey Jackson uh, breaks it down great, so highly recommend to just read that. But it's its own story, but and I know we're only two issues in, but does not negate anything that happened in the Batman. 
Yeah. And I, the strength obviously is because someone it enhances as it. good of an as good of an actor as uh see I know now I'm second guessing myself. He said his name. Dan, Dano. Dano or Dano. I forget which one. Paul, Paul Danish. D. Paul D. Paul D. There we Paulie go. D. That's DJ Paulie D. Paulie, yeah, he's a DJ. As much time as he put in on his character for the movie, as much work as he put in, because he put in the work. And that's, that's the right. guy that's in control of the story. Like excellent. Perfect. So I just love that expansion of the character in this world, in this comic book form. I love that. And of... Subak draws a great Paul Dano. Yeah, it's excellent. And I just, yeah. I'm so in love with this idea that we are getting the movie series. And in, like as we work on to the next movie, we're getting expansion of the world in other mediums. And comics and then TV is coming. Yeah, I, mean, that's I, what I'm I saying. do love it. It's so It's going to be so complete by the time we're done with this. Yeah, because we're gonna know everything we ever wanted to know. Like, there's mm-hmm. there there's spots about Keaton about Keaton's Batman. You're like, oh, what? How did he do this? What? What? You know, and and then Kilmer, you know, Kilmer and Clooney, they kind of muddle into that same like, you know, like like oh well, okay, how did he become Batman? You know, but Nolan does a pretty good job, but you don't really know how it ends. You don't mm-hmm. you, you don't really. You know, Bruce is always like he's in limbo. Like, is he finished? Is he truly finished? I don't know. Like, I know they lean that way. Yeah, but um, and then BVS just you know that that version of Batman he just kind of just never got to fit, never really even got started. We don't really know what happened in the beginning and how it ended. Yeah. So like this version, I think is going to be really complete because like they are mm-hmm. putting so much into it. And I don't you know, and that's fascinating to me because like I'm like me, I'm just like soaking it all up because it's all great stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, like that prequel book was great, even though it's a kid yeah. book, right? Like I mean, yeah, it was fun, and there's a lot of information in there. Mm-hmm. You know about uh, uh, even about this Riddler and everything, and you know like the kid with the glasses and the mushroom cut, like that's Dano, like that's yeah. that's that's Enigma, or whatever Nash, whatever the hell his name is. So like, to have this on top of those two things already, like, pff, man, talk about. And I even oh, mentioned like the art almost looks a little like painted watercolor ish. It's a it's a very unique yeah, yeah. style um, that I I'm unaware of the artist. Um, Can we get Colin Farrell to do a Penguin book? His other work that'd be oh, man, that'd be awesome. Right. Uh, I feel uh, like you have the, you have the book right there, right? I want to give a yeah. shout out to the artist, Stephen Subak. Okay, cool. Shout out to that him because Steve I feel Ond? like Stephen. I, I want to name drop, not like shout out because he's listening. He wants to know what we have to say. S T E V A N Stephen. But uh, yeah, cool. Overall, but I love it, man. I'm just that's good. Yeah. Uh, what else? What do you got, Pete? Uh, I don't know because apparently I'm buying, I'm getting a book a month early, so <laughs> I don't know what. So I'm gonna read some things, and if they come out next month, then uh, sue me. Yeah. Uh, Batgirls 13 uh, finishes up the uh, the uh, the Freaky Friday storyline, which is really great, and uh, I think that's a lot of fun. Um, this is probably my favorite Batman related title currently being published. Wow. So if you guys are sleeping on Batgirls, uh you're pretty much a loser. Uh <laughs> rephrase. Rephrase. <laughs> um Catwoman 50 anniversary issue. Uh Catwoman and Punchline are fi- finally score off face to face. It is a huge issue with huge ramifications. Catwoman winds up in prison. So oh, they're nice. teasing possibly someone taking up the the mantle in Alleytown while she's in prison. And I'm getting kind of like I know it's kind of the introduction of this next direction of the story, but I'm getting that kind of Zdarsky uh, daredevil in, in jail vibe. So maybe something you guys want to check out. Um, Punchline, the Gotham game ties into Catwoman. Really cool stuff. I'm digging this Uh my girl Bluebird is back in Gotham in full gear, and she has a showdown with Punchline, and that's great. And the two of them are really getting personal. And uh, I'd hate to see Punchline get the better of Bluebird because you all know how much I love uh, Harper. Mm-hmm. Uh, what else? Harley Quinn. Wow, Harley Quinn, twenty five. Stephanie Phillips does no wrong. I love this woman. I love. Love her writing. We're talking Spider Verse Harley Quinn, Old Woman Harley, the Harley Quinn who laughs, for lack of a better term, and uh, Incontinuity Harley, all fighting off because uh, the Harley Quinn who laughs wants to kill all the Harleys in the multiverse and be the only Harley Quinn. Oh um, and then Titans United Blood Pack 
it, this is probably just as good as the Titans that's on TV right now, which means it's not good at all. Uh, you could probably skip this. <laughs> I'm going to do you all a solid one. They love to make these Titan series when the show comes out. Uh, the last one was better, but this one is basically the same thing. It's Brother Blood. It's Mother Mayhem. It's just in a comic version. Aqualad's alive, so there's slight differences. But yeah, like save your five bucks. Pass on this. Four dollars. Oh. I'm telling you right now. You took the bullet. Yeah, I did it for you. I, I did that for you. So he does for the for the fans. He's an I influencer. Do it, I do it for listeners. I do it for listeners. Oh, and Batman Incorporated, you can just not read because it's probably not any good. <laughs> <laughs> uh all right. There you go. Batman in December. Pretty good month. Still. It was a good month, you know. Good yeah, month. How was your how was your Christmas? You get any good Batman comics for Christmas? I bought myself. That counts. Uh, I, I posted a picture of that. Right? I bought the hardcovers of uh Killing Time uh-huh. and Ooh, sexy, Batman sexy. Catwoman. And then a Tim More Sale King, Black, huh? That's right. Tim Sale Black and White, which was um, a book that came out years ago. Richard Starkings okay. and him conversations about his career up about uh Tim Sale's career up to maybe like 2008 or something, I think. Okay, uh, exactly. I've always wanted to read that. And so yeah, finally got got that. Um, because you know he's gonna be talking about that Batman work, but then also Spider-Man Blue, Hulk Gray, Daredevil Yellow. I love the Marvel Colors books. Yeah, and then the one that nobody ever talks about, Wolverine Gambit. Oh, um, I, I never even knew that. I didn't know that. Oh, yeah, that's a, that's that, a good one. That's no one ever early... talks about Captain America White either, so. Yeah, my least favorite of the color books, but I, I do enjoy it. I, oh, I, I do agree like with it. You. Daredevil um, Yellow is probably my favorite. Actually, no, Spider-Man. Uh, Daredevil Spider-Man Yellow is Blue is my Blue. favorite. But they're man, tied. Da- yeah, they're, so good. they're both so good. Hulk Gray is good, too. I got a, but, I got um, a print signed by Tim Sale of Spider-Man Blue, so I'm very happy okay. about that. Okay, yeah. I never got to meet him. It's so my only I, signature. I, uh, I, I got um, my, my my one Tim Sale story is I I, I see Tim Sale there, mm-hmm. and like he's he's doing. I'm assuming. Where were you? I'm in New York Comic Con. I was with Haas, yeah. and I I started. Oh, this pack- is like 2019. Yeah, so I I, you know, I put my bag down and I start pulling out an issue of uh, of uh, what would I have? I believe it was Long Halloween. It was Long Halloween number one. So you just so carry Long Halloween in your back pocket. See, my you're back, a fan too, Peter. Backpack, backpack, mm-hmm. not back pocket. I didn't roll okay. it up. Anyways, like a newspaper. <laughs> <laughs> it's in a bag and board for crying out loud. <laughs> and I, I'm going to get Tim Sale to sign it. And uh, his like compadre comes up to me. He's like, "Hey, what's going on? What what can I help you with?" I was like, "I was just hoping I can get a signature for Tim from Tim on this book." And he goes, "Tim's not signing books right now, but if you want, you can pick up a, a signed print." And I was like. Oh, because like this isn't like photocopy. It's like, no, nope, no, nope. he signed every one, each is his individual sign, 100 percent legit on it. And I'm like, okay, great. So I didn't get him to sign my book, but I was able to get a signed print and I picked Spider-Man Blue because that's probably like my favorite. Uh, you know, over over Long Halloween, don't kill me, Ryan. That's okay. But uh, I was able to do that. Um, it's such a good story, I wouldn't be mad at it. Yeah. But you know, it's it's like it's it's funny how like I did think of this, like when I went to go see him, I I do own the original run of spider-man blue but i ended up bringing along halloween even though i like spider-man blue more <laughs> so i just I, I guess i was just in a rush i was like okay b yeah that's the beginning of the yeah. book <laughs> the, the when you have 41 long boxes yeah. sometimes stv you don't you know, like all that stuff you're just like i'm not digging through there <laughs> yeah that's the one got it top of the pile but uh, uh yeah. so you're saying with books getting I said at the beginning, Pete, uh, great year for Batman comics. Yes. Why don't you go ahead and tell me what comes to mind? What was your favorite Batman book of 2022? Now this got it. Now, hold on. This could mean something that finished something that was completed beginning to end uh, in 2022. I didn't even mention one dark night was also an, a series that for me came in this year. It's got to be Batman. The imposter, the imposter again, yeah. because I, I like, that could possibly fit within the Batman universe if you want to, you know, do a little head cannon. Sure. Uh, but yeah, like that just Matt Tomlin hots off the Batman, right? It's a three, three prestige. I forget mm-hmm. what the name of it. You know, yeah, just prestige you know, format. You know, high quality book from a high quality writer. Uh, coming in off that movie, like wow, just that, and uh, you know, I got to give a little love to Sam Hamm and Batman eighty nine. Um, certain people don't enjoy that book. You know, same people who don't like to pay their debts, uh, <laughs> and uh, you know, it's just it's sad. But I had a wonderful rush of nostalgia and fun, and I enjoyed it thoroughly. 
Um, it was fun to see what would have happened to Harvey Dent if uh, B- Burton's Batman three was made. Um, and then, you know, to see the Marlon Wayans Robin finally, like a li- mm-hmm. kind of like a lifelong dream. Like you always for kids. Yeah. So th- those are probably the two things that stand out the most from 2022 for me. Okay. So Batman Catwoman finished this year. Uh-huh. Uh, really love that. Obviously I bought the collected hardcover. Really loved Killing Time. Loved One Dark Night. Seen a pattern here. Uh, the oh, Imposter. Love the Imposter. One that is not uh, Batman Fortress. Shout out Batman Fortress. That wraps up next month. We didn't get that, an issue this month, but that wraps might up be next the month. most surprising Batman title. Very surprising of the year. Maybe mm-hmm. maybe that's the mm-hmm. award that that book gets. Fortress. Um, loving the audio adventure so far. Obviously, the continuing of Batman Scooby Doo mysteries. The ending of the first series. All that stuff. I'm loving that. But, One thing I that mean, holds audio adventures back was they released like an 80 page giant that I didn't enjoy. Yep. And we covered that last year when it came we out. Did. We were both was on, it last we both... year? That wasn't this that wasn't 2022. Yeah, that, was, that was last year. Okay. Wow. Geez. And that's why when I saw that a series was coming out, I was like, oh really? Eh, you were skeptical. Okay. I'll, I'll yeah. read it. Sure. Oh, I get you. But um, but no surprise here, and it's not completed. All right, Lee Romeo's Dear Detective, which was just you know a collection of his uh-huh covers but also formed into a story i loved that um uh, but uh beyond the white knight got one issue to go for it to be complete but it started this year and every issue even the two the intermission from clay mccormick on red hood uh, that was phenomenal it's been a good year for batman overall yeah i think even with the recent struggles of the two main titles yeah i was just that's what i was going to say the off the mini series and black label and stuff like that. There's just a trend of that has become to me. That's what I look forward to more than the main titles. And I'm not trying to dump on anyone or anything. I'm just, those excite me more than the main. Well, titles. I will. You guys suck. No, just, <laughs> <laughs> Peter Rivera's thoughts and opinions do not reflect that of the Batman book. Uh, but yeah, beyond, like beyond the white Knight has been my favorite. So uh, I put out a question on Twitter and Instagram of what other people's favorites are. And Pete, you're not alone in the camp. People, I mean, people love imposter. Yeah, it's hard so, not to. It really yeah. is, especially when you get, make Leslie Thompson such a strong force. You yeah. know, she's a character who, you know, recently probably hasn't been portrayed the best thanks to a show that I hate, Gotham. Yeah, but um, you know, it's nice to see her get a get great dynamic her. introduced in that story with her, which is definitely of like, oh, I could totally see. And then now, Madison Tomlin, you know, he's working on the Batman script, their Batman sequel script too. So. I'm I'm all in for whatever they do, but it's kind of like, oh man, if this is a little glimpse of your version of what you do with Leslie Tompkins, like yeah. awesome, bring her into the the sequel. So, but that's movies. We're talking comics. Uh, that's the end of comics. Great year for comics. Uh, feel free to chime in Batman Book Club Twitter and Instagram at the Batman BC. I, I would like to, to say give one your thing. thoughts. Go for it. The most fun I've had reading um, Batman comics this year has been. The Road to No Man's Land with yes. my friend Ryan Lauer. So that's been the yeah. most fun reliving my favorite Batman story on YouTube with uh, the man who never leaves Gotham City. That's right. Ryan Lauer. The man who doesn't know M- Magog or whatever. <laughs> I love I love Gotham City. I want to stick around in Gotham City. It's my favorite. <laughs> uh, oh, God, Ryan Lauer just didn't know who Magog was. And it just. Which, I hey, thought, we're going to. I thought I knew him. I thought I knew him. We're gonna hop back into the road to no man's land. We we're are gonna keep it. We're gonna keep it going. Uh, we're not stopping because oh, the, because you know, my brother got me volume two of no man's land omnibus. My my uh, no man's land omnibus is arriving next week. Okay, so, so I'm ready to go. I got the full steam like, ahead. Well, 2023. <laughs> I've got full my third version of this gigantic <laughs> story. It's your long Halloween. I get it. Uh, yeah. Pete, why don't thanks again for coming back on. Thanks for doing all this homework every single month. Uh, enjoy. If I did not like you, I would not have you come back on. So it's always uh, good talking back comics with Peter Arvera. So why don't you yeah. go ahead and, and plug away? You could follow me on social media. That's Instagram, uh, Twitter, Mastodon, and Zach Snyder's little favorite platform. Yeah, a little Mastodon. And Zach Snyder's favorite platform of all time, Vero, mm-hmm. at Pete Illustrated. You can follow podcast number one. That's a news-based podcast that I co-host with the champion of Long Island.
Island, Eric Q. Holzman at straight underscore O underscore G. That's straight out of Gotham. We have a Facebook group and a Facebook fan page. Consider joining both. Lots of news, lots of great discussion there. Podcast number two, the Italian Spider-Man Coalition podcast. I do that with Wrigley Field's finest, Nico and Nicholas Caruso, the father and son dynamic that everyone loves to argue with on Twitter. Uh, Just a bunch of Goombas talking Spider-Man, so that's good. Check out that show. Lots of fun there. That's at Italians for Spidey on Twitter. Check out at Team Yellow Oval on Twitter as we celebrate the return of Keaton, the Yellow Oval. Uh, There's toys there are toy pictures out uh, you know they may be illicit but uh they may be out on the internet so i won't share them but i know some people that do um so check that stuff out uh let's see what else do we have uh, i'm all over batman on film.com and batman on film youtube i got toy reviews comic book reviews interviews with michael uselin and tara strong uh so you want to check that out check that out uh even you know the late great kevin conroy as well uh there's a bunch of youtube stuff there from me and Haas with Kevin Conroy. So check that out on Batman on Film YouTube. And, uh, you know, I am the associate producer, guest host, <laughs> and best friend of the Batman Book Club. That's so, right. That's right. He does. Puts in the work. That's right. uh, like I just said a couple minutes ago, follow the Batman Book Club on Twitter and Instagram at the Batman BC for latest episode drops, upcoming episodes, sometimes some giveaways. Uh, you know, March is around the corner. So we're going to have another of the Batman Book Club bracket challenge. Uh-oh. Uh, which this one is going to be a doozy. I can guarantee it. Right now. It's going to be a, it's going to be <laughs> inker. No, <laughs> um, but you've done writers, you've done artists, right? Haven't done artists. That's actually okay. what this one's okay. going to be. This oh, it's going to be an artist. artist. No, this one. Oh, it's going to be, I think this, if you be don't more vote for Neil writers. Adams, I will personally kick you in the groin. Neil Adams needs to win. There's no other artist. You'll pull a around. Jane silent Sorry. Bob at the end of Jane silent Bob strikes back. Track everybody down via their handles. Yeah, like I will track you down and kick you in the groin. It's Neil Adams. That's it. Uh, so sorry. yeah, that's that's coming. Uh, next month is going to be a great month on the show. So follow along to see what's coming. Uh, make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel, the Batman Book Club, where Pete and I here are doing the Road to No Man's Land. There's also some video episodes with uh, some high profile people, and uh, might be some more of those coming up. There's also from page to screen that I have some of those episodes of discussions up there. So go to YouTube and do that. And if you want to support the show, there's a variety of ways to do that. Number one, patreon.com slash the Batman BC. Number two, tpublic.com type TBBC for the Batman book club. And lastly, if you don't want to spend any money at all, it's 100% A-OK. The easiest and quickest and most impactful thing you can do is rate and review the show wherever you listen to podcasts. So Apple, Spotify, Amazon, Google Play, iHeartRadio, wherever, just rate and review the show because the more reviews it gets, the more it helps spread the word. And Peter, as we all know, the word is panicious. So, uh, happy new year. See you in 2023. For Peter Arvera, I am Ryan Lauer. Until next time. We never end up.